Morning. So is my lawn really dying? Well, I wouldn't call it dying, but man, I have a ton of fungus. And we expected this. I told you guys this. I told you that this lawn was going to have issues once this heat and humidity hit. I'm going to talk about that, show you how to treat for this fungus issue, and how I'll probably be transitioning this cool season grass into more of a warm season lawn. Next, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to show you that huge reseeding project. We had a massive storm last night. I'm going to go out. I haven't looked at the damage. I'm going to go look at the damage. I'm going to show you the big sprinkler that we have. Uh, a couple of you guys have asked about that, that huge irrigation sprinkler. But before I begin, here's an important note. Something happens this time of year. and What is it? Lawn care products, for some reason, around the 4th of July and a couple weeks after that, start to go out of stock. And some of it has to do with the way that the manufacturers run their plants. But I'm going to warn you that here's what you need to do that I'm going to do today. Don't wait till next week. I want you to do it today, 4th of July, or within the, within the next 48 hours. I want you to make a list of everything you're going to need for the next 60 days. So if you want to put down Dirt Booster, order Dirt Booster enough for 60 days. Green Chalker, if you want to put down Green Chalker, order it. I'm telling you. I've seen this year after year. PGF Complete, whether it's the regular 1648 or 1608, if you need it, get it. The other thing you probably want to order is get some uh, of the Double Kill product because as warm and humid as it is, we're going to start to see army worms move in. It's going to be a major problem. Also, grubs. Grubs are going to start to be really active. So make sure you have some of the Double Kill. In the description below, I will list these items and I will have links on Amazon for it. And you can go and you can buy it, but you need to make a list for the next 60 days. I don't know why it happens every year that after the 4th, for about 30 or 60 days, stuff starts to run out because all your manufacturers shut down their plants. It's They shut down for the week after the week of 4th of July, then it's too hot to run, their machines overheat. I'm telling you, it happens every year. Okay, so let's go ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll walk you out, I'll show you this project. Let's look at the damage. I'm surprised. I cannot believe we didn't have trees come down last night. We had a massive storm come in and hit and tons of wind. And I was inside going, oh my goodness, what is going to fall down? So let's do that first. If you haven't watched that seating video I did out here. Now this is the farmhouse renovation project. We've done this whole property. And one of the last things that I'm not looking forward to but has to be done was taking this nasty pond frontage in front of the house that was just crap and turning it into something that just looks nice. I don't necessarily want to have a half inch Bermuda lawn. I just want to have a nice green grass area out here. So here is the final project and this is what it looks like. And thank goodness we were able to get all the wheat straw down. Um, I don't see any huge washout problems. There's my big irrigation sprinkler. I'll show you guys that in a minute, but I know for a fact that over here, this is where a lot of my water runs out because it comes off the roof system over here and it just comes down this hill. And sure enough, see, see what I'm seeing here? So I have a little bit of a washout slide here in this area. And then I have a little bit of a, and then I have the major drain part here. Now that's good. And why is that good? That means that what I can do is I can probably use these this railroad tie system and actually dig a channel all along here. This is what we're gonna eventually do. And then have that water, dig a channel, fill it with gravel and have it go down here. So instead of having all this water just consistently flood over here, we're gonna divert it and we're gonna make the water go where we want. It's the same thing we've been doing up on our road systems. Why in that previous video, I rented an excavator and a skid steer to work on these road and drainage issues. Okay, so let's get to the fungus issue. Let me explain what I'm doing, why I'm having this issue. When we built this property, some idiot built this house right next to four massive oak trees. There were stumps, one, two, three, four, that were four to five feet across. Massive stumps. And everyone keeps saying, Doc, you need to rent a stump grinder. I have stump ground 60 big trees out of this property. And here's the problem. When you stump grind something that big, you have this massive pile of debris and you got to take that debris out of there and then you got to fill it with something. Well, guess what? We also had that soil, that stupid soil that had a bunch of wood chips in it. So underneath this, I've got a ton of this wood organic matter. 
and I know for a fact that that's one of my issues. I've got mushrooms growing, I've got fungus growing, I've got now I've got lots of rain, I've got temperatures in the 90s, and I've got humidity at 80 to 90 percent. Fungus city. Okay, that's number one. So this is a good time of year to put down some fungicide. There are two products that I recommend. One is going to be the spray propiconazole or the granular. Either one. I'll link in the description on the page below. I'm going to link to everything. The fungus treatments, the fertilizers, uh, dirt booster, everything. So you can help prevent this. But unfortunately, we've been so busy. I've been away. We're working on this other project. We've got cleanup. We've got gardens. i got so much going on, I kind of neglected this lawn. So I had the fungus move in. So what I'm going to do yesterday, let me tell you the steps. Number one, start cutting short. <laughs> let this stuff dry out. You've got to get that moisture out of there. So I cut it short and then I did a spray treatment of propiconazole on top of this. Next, what did I do? I'm going to do it rained last night. It rained heavy. So today I'm going to cut it even shorter. I'm almost going to scalp this lawn. I'm going to hit it again with another treatment of propiconazole. I'm going to hit it for a second time. Then what we're going to do is we are going to come in here and we're going to keep scalping and keep scalping. Then I'm going to come in and do a core aeration and I'm going to pick up all those cores. I don't want to put them back. I'm going to pick up all those cores. I, um, I'm going to use my lawn sweeper and I'm going to sweep up all these cores and then I'm going to put down some common Bermuda. Everyone's going to say, Doc, why don't you put down a hybrid Bermuda? Because back here, I'm really concerned with all this wood underneath this soil. I don't think a hybrid nice Bermuda is going to look nice. I'll put both down. I'll actually order some. Um, I'll order a hybrid and I'll order the common, but I really think I'm going to have to put down a common Bermuda. And it doesn't look bad. It just looks like a, a, a thicker blade. It'll look okay. This lawn, I just don't think is going to survive. I do not think it's going to survive. So. I'm going to assume that and I'm going to take action, but let me show you the fungus and this fungus is bad. It's not just spots. You can actually see the fungus growing. So if you look, see that white fuzz right there, see that white fuzz around and then see this and there's fuzz and fungus all inside here. And I have got hundreds of these spots all over the lawn. So it's time to take some action. I got to get this thing to dry out. Next, let's talk about Dirt Booster. The question keeps coming up. Okay, Doc, uh, mycorrhizal fungi is good fungus and helps battle the bad fungus. Will that, will a fungicide hurt mycorrhizal fungi? I've said this time and time again, and I actually found a good research paper where they tested 75 different uh, fungicides and their impacts on mycorrhizal fungi growth. And in the end, the overall conclusion is that all fungicides do not eradicate fungus totally. You got that? So you will not eradicate fungus totally, period. Good fungus or bad fungus. It will, you will not do it. It just helps control it, it reduces it. The other thing, that's why we need to dry this out and open this up to help get rid of that. Um, but mycorrhizal fungi, same thing. You won't eradicate it. You'll just slow the population down a little bit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come out, you're gonna apply your fungicide, you're gonna wait about a week, then come out and put out your dirt booster and bump up that mycorrhizal fungi again. I get that question a lot. So that's what we're doing back here. That's my plan. My plan is now to focus on cutting this short, keeping it short, do a core, heavy core aeration, open this up and get some of that moisture out of here so I can control what's going on. This is way too thick. This is way too long. I need to get it down. I'm gonna start cutting it hard. This was an absolute butt whipping. But thank God we got all this stuff down. I knew we were going to have a storm pop up. It only said 20% chance of showers, but I had this feeling there's so much energy in the air with this humidity and this heat that the storms just pop up, man. So I'm going to take you down and show you the sprinkler system. Now, um, we run the shallow irrigation. The shallow irrigation system runs our back irrigation, and we're also going to run it in here. I got a guy coming. That's going to put it in. We're going to put one, two, three heads here, shoot them this way. One, two, three heads, shoot it this way. Just enough, just to get a little bit of water on this, you know, in July and August when it's brutally hot down here. This is, this is the, uh, this is my big, I'll, I'll try and find a link to one of these. This is not something you can run off your garden hose, by the way. This is the big sprinkler. This is one of those big ones that shoots, you know, 80 feet. 
I'm running a, just to show you my setup, I'm running a two inch high pressure pump. This pressure pump runs 94 PSI and about 85 gallons per minute. When I put it up high, it's actually too much. And I actually have a intake system and we used to run this 500 feet up to the fields. This thing will just crank. So this thing is the big sprinkler. And you know, you see this on ball fields and everything and it'll hit, when I crank it up, it'll actually hit the house. So it'll cover this whole area. And let me tell you what, what I started off doing the first day is I had one of these things with a garden hose. And I was like, dude, I'm gonna be out here for hours and hours with this. So I said, I've got to. So I spent like two or three hours getting all the equipment out, getting this thing set up. And man, I was so excited when I got this thing up and running. I was able to get water down. And the nice thing is, is this gets so hot and humid out here, so hot and dry, pounded with sun. I can run this thing literally for about six, seven minutes, and this whole area is wet. So 60 feet to here, and then you can see she was hitting here another 15 feet, so she'll throw 75 feet easy, even with the damn pinhole leak in it. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so I've talked to you about my plan out here. We're going to open this up. We're going to get it down short. We're going to treat it. That's step number one. Step number two, I showed you the grass project out here. I'll talk about that more in the next video. I showed you the pump. I've warned you about ordering products, and I'm telling you, today, <laughs> do it today or tomorrow. Make a list, get your products ordered. Now I'm going to take you up and show you something really cool. I'm going to show you the vegetable garden, which has probably a 1,000 pounds of produce up there using no fertilizers whatsoever, just dirt booster. Here we go. Okay, so I'm up in the upper fields. I want to show you real quick. We've been real fortunate to have actually a decent amount of rains, almost too much rain, but I want to show you this field over here. Look how thick and lush this is. Now, this is one of our wildlife fields. So this is actually planted for the deer, and the deer just pack in here. And you can see clover and strips of purple top turnip, clover, strips of purple top turnip. And man, let me tell you what, if you wonder why we call this place the Rack Ranch, I'm gonna put up a video clip real quick and I wanna show you. I sit in my sunroom and I look at the pond and on the other side of the pond berm, we have a feeder over there and I wanna show you some bucks that come in there every night. This place is loaded with bucks all the way through spring, all the way through the summer, up until they go into rut and then they start to move out. But we have a huge amount of deer here and lots of big bucks out here. And uh, we take care of them, that's what we do. We really don't hunt a lot. Out of the thousand deer I saw last year I shot, we shot one deer, that's it. And we really just manage it for the wildlife. We're trying to get the turkey population back up. We've got wood ducks, we've got blue herons, we've got all kinds of wildlife here. We stock the pond, but oh man, there's just butterflies everywhere in this field right now. But let me take you in. I'll just go up and show you the cornfield too. I wanna to show you this. This is pretty amazing. So on our garden, we don't use any fertilizers, zero. We just use dirt booster in the soil and then we've used Dirt Booster compost top dressing. Here's a quick note. I was having my orchard garden over here got attacked by Japanese beetles while I was away. And so I have sprayed that. But here, these bags, I put this out 48 hours ago. Look at that line. There's a line of Japanese beetles in there. There's probably a hundred Japanese beetles already in there. These things work. So if you have a Japanese beetle problem, hopefully I'll remember to link to those on that page down below. But I want to show you just how cool this garden really is. It's so impressive. <clears throat> this is 100% natural. Um, we, really, we don't use any fertilizers. We don't use any pesticides, no fungicides. 
But when I left for the beach for my month vacation, I sprinkled wildflower seeds all around the edge and a little bit of Dirt Booster compost. And I want you to look at this. Isn't this crazy? It's just loaded with bees, it's loaded with flowers. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. I mean, the whole place is just buzzing with bees all the way around this whole garden. Every time I come up here, everyone's looking at the produce and I'm looking at the wildflowers. They're absolutely stunning. But the good witch came up here and we stripped out all the tomato plants to open them up. There is not a single ounce of ground here that's dirt. It's all covered in clover and grasses. This is basically a regenerative no-till operation. But I want you to look at the produce. Look at this. Is that crazy? Is that insane? This is one tomato plant. Look at that. And this goes all the way down like this. So on this one row, I probably have at least 100 pounds of tomatoes sitting here. And I've got one, two, three rows of tomatoes. There's got to be 200, 300 pounds of tomatoes. We've already pulled 150 pounds of produce out of this place, and i got to pull more. Uh, my problem is, is time, labor, and um, I'm finding people, all my neighbors, I'm leaving five-gallon buckets of produce on their doorsteps. Even like the green pepper plants, they are so loaded with green peppers right now. Every plant, every plant has, you know, five, six, seven. Look at this. They're just absolutely loaded in here. Every green pepper plant is like that. Every tomato plant. We got to get in here and restake up some of these tomatoes. The green beans. I'm so tired of picking green beans. Thousands of them. Peas are coming up. Um, we had one problem come up, and that was the fact that the yellow squash has gotten too big. We haven't been able to get in here. Well, I've got these huge yellow squash. And I'm telling you, there's got to be 25, 30 of them in here. There's got to be 100 pounds of yellow squash that I just haven't had time to harvest. Um, now the zucchini, it's actually pretty cool. We always leave a couple big zucchinis on the plants. So like you can see as an example, this monster, if I can get to him, show him to you. Look at that monster right there. <laughs> it's over two feet long. So on the zucchini plants, we like to leave a couple big ones because I give them to people to make zucchini bread and I've got a bunch of them. I've got 150 pounds of zucchini sitting here. But when I say big yellow squash, you think I'm kidding? Look at this. Look at that. Those things are getting massive. And unfortunately, when they get that big, they're not good to eat. So I've got to find someone that, you know, wants a casserole or something because, I mean, look. Look at that right there. Isn't that crazy? Green beans, God Lord, I'm so tired of picking green beans, man. My green bean plants are a little bit yellowing. Um, <clears throat> and that's because somewhat of the Japanese beetles in here, but I mean, there's just tons of green beans all in here. Cucumbers. <laughs> I went over to my neighbor's house with eight cucumbers yesterday. I said, please tell me you like cucumbers and handed them eight cucumbers. But I've got my cucumber plants are finally starting to grow up. And you can see, this is what I've got. Look at this. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And they're hanging all through here. I gotta come back. I gotta pick more. I probably got eight more I gotta pick today. But isn't this... Look at the butterflies. Look at them. Butterflies, bees, everywhere, all in here. Look at this lush green. The infiltration rates of this place have greatly increased, so I don't have runoff anymore because there's roots all over the ground. We do not use fertilizers. I'm going to tell you again, if you have a flower garden or if you have a vegetable garden, put Dirt Booster into the soil and then make Dirt Booster compost. I got plenty of videos on how we make that and top dress, just top dress with Dirt Booster compost. It's all natural. These are actually, this is a row of pumpkins and we're having to cover all the pumpkins with wire because the deer are coming in and just biting the pumpkins. Okay, so this area is where I was able to get Dirt Booster into the soil. 
these corn plants up here are eight feet tall and they actually have corn cobs that'll be ready in about a week or two. As we go down, you'll see, I wasn't able to get dirt booster into the soil and look at the change of the corn. how small and weak it looks over here totally different look to it so we did come in finally and we put down some we were low on phosphorus we had to put down some phosphorus and I put down a little bit of nitrogen fast release but I came through here and like this area over here I hit some of this with super juice over here and man let me tell you what that stuff that I really hit with super juice is all nice and dark and green now. Pretty cool. All right, so this is the end of the cornfield that we were able to get some of the super juice, excuse me, some of the dirt booster into the soil. And this stuff really took off fast, and man, it's doing really well. So just for a perspective level, you can see just how tall this corn is. I mean, it's probably seven feet tall, I would guess, something like that. But I've got lots, I've got lots of baby corn in here. Like here, look. See it? I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> Just in this area, you got 25 corn cobs coming up. Now, the deer will come in here. And the deer will be come in here and start to eat some of this crap. They're gonna they're gonna eat some of my corn. But how much corn can I eat? I mean, a couple cobs a week, and I can only give it away. So, you know, share and share alike. I don't mind them coming in and getting it. The raccoons. Um, we've worked on the raccoon population, so I'm not really worried about them. Raccoons will definitely destroy. But you can already see. Looks like someone came in here and was trying to eat some of that right there. Look at that pollen. See that right there? Look, watch. Isn't that cool? Look at that pollen. That's cool. The humidity is stifling. When I come step outside, it's stifling. The humidity is just unreal. And if you're in this same situation where you look at your 10 day and you've got 30 to 50% chance of thunderstorms every single day, if you're in the 90s and you got this heat, get ready to put down some fungicide. It's a preventative at this point. Don't let that happen. What to me would happen to you. Um, get out some fungicide, put it out. Cause especially if you start to see any of these spots, if you start to see any of this fungus show up, you got to get on top of it, put down your fungicide treatment, give it about a week and then come back out and start out with some dirt booster, maybe a bit, a little bit of green shocker, but I really want to encourage you guys make sure that you're aware that this shortage issue, the past two years, not due to COVID, this is just due to normal production issues. I'm telling you, this time of year, stuff starts to run out. We always run into this problem. So sit down, think about the next two months. What fertilizer do I need? What lawn treatments do I need? Human char, am I gonna try and improve my soil? What am I gonna put down? Make a list and get ready. I'm telling you, happens all the time. So uh, I'll put links to all the products down below on that one page. If I'm missing something, drop a comment and say, hey doc, you didn't link to this. The sprinklers, it's kind of hard to link to the sprinklers. Um, and I just want to warn you that it, they really don't work. These are really high pressure agricultural spr sprinklers. You got to have the right pump for them. So it's kind of hard to link to the right ones for you. That's about it. Hit subscribe and then I'll show you more on my lawn project out here and I'll keep you posted on this garden up here. Doc.